Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. We're here at the University of South Florida's College of Marine Science, and I'm here to guide you through a quick tour of some of the stuff our college has to offer. And I say quick because if we wanted to talk about everything, we need your ear for at least an hour. My name is Sarah and I was actually a student here. I graduated in 2014 with my master's and then I was lucky enough to stay on board as a research scientist ever since. So I've been here for about eight years and I feel like I've got a decent handle on what our college has to offer. So right now we're inside one of our two buildings for the College of Marine Science. This is called the Knight Oceanographic Research Center. And if you take a quick look around, it's got a pretty neat lobby. So our college was actually founded way back in 1967. And you might be able to see it just to my right here, that building in the background, it's called the Marine Science Laboratory. And it, before our college was in it, it actually functioned as a merchant marine training facility for the US Navy. And that just goes to show you how long the peninsula we're on here has been steeped in maritime history. Our college brings in about $20 million a year in research funding. And that helps to make us a really strong anchor as the largest marine science research complex in the southeastern United States. So lucky for us, we have two oceanographic research vessels right in our backyard. We have the RV WT Hogarth and the RV Weatherbird, and both are operated by the Florida Institute of Oceanography. And the Hogarth was actually brand new just a couple years ago. So both vessels have been used to support tons of amazing research for our faculty, students, and staff. And today, we're gonna to have the captain of the Weatherbird, as well as FIOs, or Florida Institute of Oceanography's Marine Operations Manager, tell you some more about it. Hi, my name is Boomer Baumeister. I'm the captain of the research vessel Weatherbird 2, docked here at the College of Marine Science at the University of South Florida. You see the ship behind me here. Uh, on board the Weatherbird, uh, for the last several years, we've done a ton of research, and we've facilitated a ton of research for the College of Marine Science on the Weatherbird uh, in regards to the Deepwater Horizon spill to uh, include all kinds of different things, including uh, geological work. We've uh, collected a ton of sediment uh, out in the oil field for the marine geologists here at the College of Marine Science to uh, analyze. Uh, we've collected a lot of water for the marine chemists to analyze out in the Gulf of Mexico with instruments that we carry on board the ship. Uh, we've also done a ton of fish collection for the biologists here. Uh, we've caught thousands and thousands of fish that have been analyzed over the years uh, in regards to the Deepwater Horizon spill. Uh, we've done a lot of work uh, with some really neat instruments uh, for the marine resource assessment people here at the College of Marine Science. Uh, we towed a camera array behind the ship called the Sea Bass uh, for hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of miles, uh, looking at different fish and things underwater. The Weatherbird is uh, 115 feet long. Uh, we are a general purpose research vessel. Uh, we're set up to accommodate all different kinds of researchers on board. Uh, we can configure the deck in all different ways. Uh, we can change winches around, we can add things. Um, we do a lot of buoy work for the College of Marine Science as well. So we go out and we do full swaps on the observation buoys out in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, as well as we go out and maintain them uh, the Weatherbird has circumnavigated the Gulf of Mexico in the last 10 years uh, doing this work. We've been to Cuba, uh, to Mexico on several occasions, as well as the Texas coast, the Louisiana coast, and all the way around. If you look at the ship's track over the last 10 years, uh, it pretty much paints the Gulf of Mexico red. <clears throat> the Weatherbird carries 13 scientists and 7 crew members for a total complement of 20. We have an endurance of about two weeks. Uh, we work 24 hours, seven days a week around the clock on different watch schedules. So there's science being accomplished uh, throughout the entire day, 24 hours long. Uh, we serve three meals a day on board. The, uh, the ship has a full-time chef. Uh, we adhere to all different kinds of food considerations. So uh, these days we get uh, vegetarians, vegans, pescatarians, uh, omnivores, you name it. Uh, so the weather, weather bird is set up to take a uh, variety of different interests and tastes to see. Good morning, my name is Rob Walker. I'm the Marine Operations Manager here at the Florida Institute of Oceanography. Uh, we're on the USF campus in St. Petersburg today where we operate our two oceanographic research vessels. Right now I'm standing on the back deck of the research vessel Weatherbird 2, uh, our largest ship. Uh, next door to us is the research vessel Hogarth, uh, which came online in 
2017, and we've been operating for about two and a half years uh, out of St. Petersburg. In addition to the vessel operations, we also have a full service marine lab in the Florida Keys that provides uh, dormitory and laboratory space for nearshore research in the Florida Keys. The FIO is a 30 member consortium made up of the state universities here in Florida, in addition to private institutions and some industry members. Uh, we provide the facilities uh, as platforms for, for research uh, here in the state of Florida and beyond. At the College of Marine Science, we study our oceans using an interdisciplinary approach. We offer both master's and PhD level degrees in five main concentrations. Those are biological oceanography, physical oceanography, chemical oceanography, geological oceanography, as well as marine resource assessment. Here at the college, we recognize that just doing the research isn't enough. We have a long-standing history of community outreach and involvement. And one of our longest running programs is called the Oceanography Camp for Girls, which is getting close to its 30th year. We also have a lot of students and staff that are involved with something called Taste of Science. And then there's also an annual festival in October called Science Fest, which many of our labs here are involved in. So now we're gonna take you to one of our newest labs called the Marine Environmental Chemistry Laboratory or MECA Lab for short. This lab is helping to facilitate lots of different research, anywhere from fish health all the way to studying mud that's millions of years old. The other cool thing about this lab is that it's also being used by medical professionals right down the road in St. Pete, which is driving innovation across many different fields. So now we're here in a really cool spot on our campus, which is our ocean technology group. The engineers in this group are helping to support research that includes mapping out fish neighborhoods in the Gulf of Mexico, which can assist in better fisheries management. And then we also have instruments like this, which is a, an oceanic glider. And what this does is it basically goes up and down in the water column and collects whatever data you need it to collect. We like to call it the pickup truck of the Gulf of Mexico for us. So it can measure temperature, salinity, and it even helps in red tide research. So in addition to the gliders, another piece of equipment that gets a lot of use here at the college is this right here, which is called the CBAS or Camera-Based Assessment Survey System. And what's neat about this is this one was custom built here by our engineers and it was in collaboration with our biological scientists who wanted to use it to map out the fish neighborhoods. So what we're doing is, is better characterizing where fish live and why they live there and who exactly is there use, utilizing that habitat. And the other cool thing about the, the sea bass, aside from all the video cameras up front, and we've also got lights if they're needed, we're also continuously taking measurements of chlorophyll, the temperature of the water, salinity, as well as how much junk is in the water. So that's a measure of turbidity is what we call it. And you might be surprised to know, but much of the Gulf is really poorly characterized or not characterized at all, even though it's a heavily utilized um, you know, ocean basin. So we're, this is just one small part of trying to explore more about the Gulf of Mexico and hopefully ensure that it's, it's healthy for years to come.